Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Care Manager. My name is Ryan Abramski. I am the Director of Business Development, and I'm joined as always with Teresa Jackson, our Director of Care Management. Both of us work for Easy Living. We're a home care and care management agency serving the Tampa Bay area for over 20 years. As always, the Ask a Care Manager video series is brought to you by our friends at the Senior Living Resource Magazine and their website, seniorlivingguide.com. Your one-stop local and statewide resource for all things senior housing and health. Anything from home care services like Easy Living to care management, again, like Easy Living, memory care, assisted living, senior health, and financials, check out Senior Living Resource Magazine and their website, seniorlivingguide.com. And if you reach out to them, they will mail you an issue directly to your home. So, Teresa, welcome back to another episode. Glad to have you back, always. Um, So, kind of, you know, we're going to keep going with some, like, real-world situations that we we see live (laughs) and in action currently as what we do in our type of business. So, we all know going to the hospital is no fun, but discharging from the hospital is exciting that you're going to be able to go home, but it's also, I think, very important to ensure that you have things lined up properly. So as a care manager, what are some things that people should try to line up or try to have in place prior to discharging home from the hospital um, in order to use the buzzword here, have a safe discharge? And we know that's super important, not only for our hospitals, but also for our skilled nursing facilities or as most people know them as a rehab center. So what are some things that people should be doing and preparing for, and how can a care manager kind of help with that kind of stuff? So first of all, let me say that um, the social worker in a rehab facility is going to do as much as possible to make sure that their patient is being discharged home safely. The problem comes when they're really not given all the information. Mm -hmm. So they may be told, yes, I have, I have support at home. Yes, I have contacted an agency and we're setting up 24 hour care at home. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Uh, no, I've already got uh, supplies. I, I have uh, a walker, I have a bedside toilet, but that might not necessarily be the case. Um, I can tell you from personal experience and working in the industry, the client, the patient, they're going to tell the the discharge planners and the doctors whatever they want to hear so they can get the heck out of there and get back home. Because that is the most important thing to them. They want to get back home. Do you need any help? No, I'm fine. Do you got any steps to go up? Not a problem. I don't have any steps to go up. So what a care manager will do, hopefully, again, as we've mentioned many times, it's it's best to go ahead and have that relationship established before someone goes into the hospital to hopefully prevent that hospitalization. Just like um, a safety assessment can be done in the home to determine are there any risk factors to prevent that fall, mm-hmm. which, um, which, you know, can occur. I mean, we can't say we can prevent every hospitalization or every fall. No one can do that. But we can definitely help reduce those risks. Sure. So a care manager can go in and do a safety assessment while um, to determine what, what durable medical equipment might be needed in the home. Uh, maybe uh, the person does have a bedside toilet or they have their own wheelchair at home, but are they in good working order? Um, have they ever been taken out of the box? you know, from when, you know, they were purchased three years ago when they, you know, family thought that they needed whatever the item might be. Um, It's amazing how many people will say, yes, I have a personal emergency response system, you know, the I've fallen and I can't get up button. Yeah. But they haven't hooked it up yet. Or they never test it. Or they put it on the bedside table. And that's just where it stays. Um. So for instance, in a recent situation, I was able to assist a client who was discharged home. And of course, we didn't get involved right until she was coming home that day. 
Um, but I was able to make sure that um, she had her bedside toilet set up. Mm -hmm. that because now therapy now the social worker at the nursing facility has set up therapy services to come in but they were going to be coming in the next day sure um not that first day when she arrived home mm -hmm. um so i made sure we tested her uh emergency response system and i had her push that button and we made sure that they knew that she was back home after six weeks and we tested it and it was still functioning um and, you know, she did have other support to make sure she had, you know, picked up her medications, picked up her food. Um, but she really would have preferred to have had some home care. So when someone discharges home at and they're, they get home at four o'clock, it's very difficult to bring in a care partner immediately if, if that hasn't been already pre-arranged. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, so, it, you know, she had to wait an extra day. So, you know, again, and, and there's been many times where I have dealt with or worked with a family who even, even on one occasion that comes to mind, mom went back home from rehab. She, the doctor said, well, you have to have 24 hour care. Well, she was going back home. She lived with her son. Mm -hmm. So he was there at night. Well, he sleeps at night and she got up in the middle of the night and fell again on the way to the hot, to the bathroom that next, you know, that night yeah, had to go one, back, yeah. back to the hospital. And when that happens, it is so difficult to, to get back to that level where you were once before. So again, having someone come in and evaluate the situation, make sure, you know, are you able to, you do you have your correct medications? Do you have, um, uh, the, do you have milk in the refrigerator? Do you have the food that you need? You know, what do you need to make sure that this discharge is safe? And if that's someone for 24 hours, 48, 72 hours, I would rather, and I've always advocated, go in with more care than you think you need because what people will always say is, well, let me get home. Let me see what help I need. And then I'll give you a call. Mm -hmm. Well, if you determine that you need help getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom because you can't do it by yourself, you may be calling me from the hospital again mm -hmm. saying, I really wish I had someone there with me. Go in. Yeah. yeah, go in with more care than you, you anticipate the need for and then cut that back. That's so much easier. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we see that way too much where it's, you know, the wait and see approach and, you know, and it's so avoidable for them to go avoid another hospitalization because they just refuse to get help that they needed and wanted to wait and see. And, you know, it's so unfortunate that that happens way too much. I, I know, I know. And, and, but, you know, people don't want to ask for help until they think they need it which, you know, that's just human nature. You know, mm -hmm. we want to be as independent and, and do for ourselves as much as possible. And we wait and wait until um, we're really in a crisis. And, and unfortunately, we've talked about this time and time again, just it's, it's okay to pre-plan. It's okay to say, um, you know, this is what I need going forward. And um, I'd rather have that support, that support structure in place in the event of that I do need some help. Absolutely. Well, Teresa, again, always appreciate the knowledge and the insight. And I think it really bodes for our audience out there to hear, hear some real world situations that they personally might be dealing with. So for anyone out there, whether you're in the home or the hospital or the rehab center, um, feel free to reach out to us. You can either comment down below, send us a message directly on Facebook or call our office, or you can visit our website and fill out the contact us form. And we'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, you know, hopefully it's not a crisis situation. So, but if it is, we'd be glad to help with that with that situation as well. So hope to see everyone next time. Teresa, thank you again and hope everyone stays safe and take care.